Hey, what's going on, guys? It's me, Train Man. We're here in TRS. And last week I got a request to drive a train from Susquika to Caps Junction. Now, I figured I'd one up that and take our UN Top 51 all the way from Temeros to Caps Junction. Now, I'm going to be playing it in cab mode just for the added experience, and if you can't tell, I'm not feeling my best. So. Yeah. Get a lot of release. I don't actually have. That's the. No. What is the. I don't even remember now. Alright. It's been a while since I've done this. Pretty sure the fireman's automatic, so I don't need to worry about that. Don't have my headphones in, by the way, so it might sound a little weird. Reason being, as I was saying, if you can't tell, I'm not... I'm a little bit under the weather. I have a little bit of a head cold, and the headphones were not uh, being kind to my ears. So I just basically turned all the volume off. For me, you guys will be able to hear it, but I'm not sure what you guys are going to be hearing basically accelerate out of here. We're crossing the main line. Hopefully nobody's coming. There aren't any signals over here. There aren't any signals on the on the narrow gauge yet. Eventually I'm going to be snatching up some semaphores to put there. I know I can bring the cutoff way back because this engine has a ridiculous amount of power. Also, oh, well, looks like we have windows in the back. We don't. I've realized how this cabin looked. Really? I didn't take the time to look around. Now we're going up the grade, we're leaving Tenoros behind. We can't look behind us. Where are our injectors? There we go. It's been so long since I've used this. It's been so, so long since I've driven anything. Cab mode or otherwise. I haven't even been, even, I haven't even been coming out here recreationally. You guys know I don't ever use hotkeys. And I snatched these guys up again, if you recall, these guys are just a little bit too small for the rails. But they look a bit too small for the engine. It's the wrong gauge entirely. I don't have another person in the cab. No fireman. No oh, fireman, but the boiler is being stoked in its own gone up a a pound. Can I hang out in these cars? No, these cars are never here. I know a couple things that do, but those cabs aren't those cars aren't one of them. Here's junction eleven sixty five. It's on the two foot gauge. It's just kinda where it's the two foot gauge is fragmenting from people Trying to restart the system and giving up, getting hit by landslides and rebuilding other track. This is the end of the two foot gauge that really shows how the two foot gauge ended.
what's the grade over here? I hit, I almost hit Control M, but we have a map view. We just don't have the gradients on. Turn the triggers on as well. I don't have any triggers. Whoops. And again, I don't know the hotkeys for driving. So I'm having to do everything manually. Not that I'm too upset about that. Oh, alright. Now, having the Mariah's Pass route is definitely taking its toll on uh, my my install over here because I've been noticing not not really so many crashes. I mean, I've been having them, but they're not the same ones that we were having before. If that makes any sense, because there were a couple crashes that I was having. One of which was a game freeze. Just it freezes up and it fails to operate, and then I just have to back out and kill it through the task manager. But the, there's a different kind of crash, which I was calling the the undo crash, which is what happened to me last time. I don't think the actual the actual video is there, but it was I screwed something up and I hit undo, and that's when it brings me back to the main screen, shows me a black box, and shows me the actual crash report. That's the only one where I get a crash report, which is why I was unable to diagnose the other crashes. I didn't have a crash report at all. So now we're coming around this, this big mountain peak, which actually looks pretty nice, I'll say. I'm going to straighten this out of where we're going to use this. Because it looks kind of ridiculous as is. Looks like a roller coaster. Which it was, if you guys remember when we rolled the when we rolled the cars down it. This is this and probably the K thirty sixes when I get some are probably gonna be the only trains to service. They're when they come up they're probably gonna be running empty. So <clears throat> the only the only real weight is going to be the the empty cars and just passenger cars like these. I w I won't expect you in top 51 to be running passenger service. I'd see a K32 during doing that or K36. I mean, really, really. I was like I haven't had a text for the last you know five or six hours. People have been leaving me in peace. Let me let me mope on the couch. And then it's like, alright, time to get down to business. Done procrastinating, let's make this video. And now someone texts me. Not gonna answer it right now. I'll answer it when I'm done. Gradients over here. Two percent. Not actually that bad. Seventy-five point seven five percent. These are the bad grades right here. This sevens and sixes. This, these are the ones you need a Shea and like two coal cars to get to the mine. and then coming back down is a pain. But we're not yet within sight of the squeaker. Something I need to test for for what I'm I've been coming up a bit okay. <clears throat> the route that the part of the route that we're gonna be passing into, uh the part two 
Caps Junction he will not have any updates. Since the last time you saw it, reason being, I devoted all my time this morning, not only reason being, I wasn't feel well, feeling well, but I devoted all my time this morning where I would have been working on it to writing instead. I got a couple of pages done. I mean, I couldn't really think straight, which was uh, putting a damper on my on my ability to write. But do that, do that, because we're gonna refuel. But, uh, that's... I downloaded... One of the things I downloaded, I went and I got this, I got these, I got, um, Canadian National 3254 again, and I got a Vulcan Ironworks 040. Now, it's actually gonna be playing a part in the zombie train, albeit not really a major part, I don't think, at least. I don't have anything specific written in for it yet. But one of the things I need to figure out is how far it can go on a full bunker of coal. I mean, of course, you can always scavenge like we're doing, but I need to figure that out anyways, just for just for the sake of my own mind. This is relatively flat, right? So let's cut this. I should have turned physics on. I did not. I believe there's an invisible platform right here, I think. So we're just gonna roll all the way out here. And come to a stop. Okay, apparently no invisible platform. Don't know where I put it then. But hold on. Let's hit map again. It should say... No, I guess there is nothing here. It might just be my imagination. Alright, well, I need to get an invisible platform if that's the case. Let's see. Yeah, wouldn't that be it, or is this... Whatever, I'm not gonna bother with it. I know on DCC it, it cuts you off, but that's enough waiting. Let's, um, where's the whistle on this? What is this? Oh, it's a light. Where is the whistle? I don't know where the whistle is. Oh well, I can blow it with the H key. Don't remember whistle signals. Oh well. Just gotta move. What have we got in terms of... We've got plenty of each. Never mind, we're not gonna bother stopping here. speed ahead. I wonder what this thing's top speed was. Let's just clip that full bunker there. Then begin going into the unbuilt portion of the map. Yeah. As I think I noted a while ago, the grades from here are a bit steeper than the ones from Temeros to Susquica. By a bit, I mean considerably. So I'm going to be leaving a helper
into Squeaker. Great are we on right now? Oh, that was a that was a three and a half. It's another three and a half right there, and then we're pretty low until we get to a four and a half, three and a half, three point seven five. We even out, and then this is all really really bad gray right here. I read that on the Uinta when. They used to have to go over Moro Castle, which was the highest, or the most difficult grade on the route. Seven, or no, it was eight and a half percent, I think. The, uh, the brake lane could walk faster than the train could move. Hopefully we won't get to that point. This is obnoxious. I wish, it, I wish it would replace the track with whatever you attach it to. Let me have this descending grade over here. It's a tight tunnel. Oh, water. By the way, I know I pointed this out before. But this thing has a uh, quite a high cutoff. It has 90%. Normally you only see 70s. I mean, that's just in my experience with the other stuff that's in TRS. Oh. Oh, how come I can't? Oh, because I was banging my camera against the mountain over there. But I guess we'd only be able to watch like this anyways, because there'd be a hill there. We're on three and a half, and then we're going to even out as we go into the tunnel. I think the worst grade is that five and a half, but it's just on that bridge. I really would like that to be the worst grade on the route. Because this is madness. Oh, wait, there's a five, there's, a, there's almost a six right there. We're gonna have five point whatever. Oh, there are a couple of sixes. Wow. And I wish there was something I could do about that. I'm not sure about tunnels on the Uinta. I don't remember if there were any or how many there were. There probably were some for such a crazy railroad. There probably were a couple of tunnels. By the way, I don't know what they designed the tunnel for, what loading gate, but we had lots of clearance. I need to name all this stuff. I need to name the tunnels and the rivers and things. Too bad this isn't SimCity where I can put, like, uh, giant signposts to say what stuff was. I'm not even sure if you can do that in the, in the current version. I remember you could do that in SimCity 2000. I have memories of playing that when I used to go to camp. We would have maybe one computer session a day. Oh, I put this thing here. Well, you know, I need to scatter buildings around it. That's what the helper does in its spare time. It takes empty uh, skeletons and brings them down to Timoros. Or it parks them in Sasquika and has a another engine take them down. I don't think they'd permit the helper to go all the way down to Timoros.
Wow. Consumed quite a bit of water. Maybe I should put a, uh, a, a tank up on the passing siding up here. Maybe it's feeding up from the river. But I don't think it'd be a good idea to stop for water on such an incline. This isn't a cog railway, we don't have that kind of leverage. Alright, and so we go over the floating bit of track and onto this uh, trestle. Which is going to be surrounded by trees. It's going to look a little bit better than it does now. Right now it kind of looks weird, just in its placement. Also, the things do not go all the way to the floor of the river there because you can't see them anyways. Just shush. We're missing a square of water. Crunch about that too. Oh, well. That wasn't the right side of the passing siding that we just went on. Should have paid more attention. By the way, as I said, there's going to be a cut here, so it's going to look a little bit different. This is a ridiculous cut, by the way. gonna be all stone walls. And a nice big long passing siding. I don't know why you need one this long, but you get one this long. We're still going faster than walking speed, which is good. We've been in here, what, 22 minutes since we left Temeros? I should have recorded the time when we made it just a squeak and we would have had a, uh, could have built a timetable out of that. What are the waybills, by the way? Power station, okay, I re need to rename that. By the way, how does this thing not want everything? The seaport normally takes everything. A 20 foot container. Where are we gonna get 20 feet from here? Was there in the place on the map that an airport? Hold on. Where's my map? Oh. I shoved my little stand out of the way when we had the party. I never got it back out again. What is an airport? Oh, and Paracu has an airport. That's way at the other end of the map. We're gonna have container trains coming all the way from Paracu to Galgora, probably. Or maybe I'll just divert them to Port Charles. But that's on the other side of the map. It's going to be a long time until we have to worry about that. So that is our Moro Castle right there. That's 6% up to the tunnel up there. I saw, I think, like an oil painting or something of... Could have been bad. Of this train going up Moral Castle. It looks insane. Uh, I'll link you I'll link you guys to it if I can. If I can find it again. It's on the railway that is currently cataloging all the Uintah stuff, what's left of the railway. It's where I learned a lot about. It's where I learned most of the stuff I know about this and about the engine, etc. So 14, 13, we're almost at 6%, we've got the 6s that are up here. We still haven't slowed to not, though, slowed to zero. You know what I'm impressed about, though? The way these guys articulated and just found a way to make all of the pikes follow that movement. Like, they didn't have to worry about... Or, well, they had to worry about all the pipes bending and twisting when the... when the... the... mallet... mallet... took as sharp turns as it does. And they found a way around that, which, frankly... I don't remember who built 
the UN Tap 51, I think it was. I want to say Baldwin, but I don't think it's Baldwin. I want to say Baldwin just because I'm pro Baldwin. I don't know why that makes any sense in, in today's world. It's like rooting for a, uh, a a team in that that Mayan ball game. Nobody plays it anymore. Not to say that people don't make trains anymore, but Baldwin's dead and gone. Okay, maybe maybe I can find a better analogy that maybe I don't know any any non-existent football teams or non-existent baseball teams that I would quote unquote root for in, in that kind of situation, so I, I can't really answer that. Right, so we're on the sixes. Slowing down to 13 miles an hour. That's a nuts grade. I'll say that much. But are these super heaters? I think they're super heaters. Ah, we made it. With ease. Trump's moral castle with ease. That's a line from a a poem I wrote about this locomotive. I know, I'm not really much of a poet, but we were supposed to write about some, I think it was a histor something of historical significance, and I just had this engine on the brain and I wrote about it. And once we get the rest of everything in here, going across this bridge will look much cooler. The bridge in and of itself is a bit long for, for what it is. I'm going to go into free roaming so I don't have to stick with the train on this long tunnel over here. And I can switch. Alright, we're all set. We wouldn't be going towards Olerston here, we'd be switching off towards Scrag Cap. I think that's the next station. No, the next station is Modico, isn't it? And then Scrag. Yeah. Modico in the big narrow gauge yard. And then from there you go to Scrag Cap, but the, uh, the passenger train would be going from Scrag Cap all the way to Temeros because that's the only way to get, basically it's the only way to get from Scrag Cap, which is on the far, the far east side of the Isthmus, Isthmus. It's the only way to get from there to Tamaros, which is on the which is in the middle of the Isthmus. It's the only way to get there without going all the way northward, northward to to Locks Dam and and Vale. Vale is one of the northernmost cities on the map. It's way, way up there. It's where the standard gauge breaks off. You go from... You go from... Tamaros to... Up north to Vale and through... On the main line all the way to... Oh, yeah, see? That time the GUI disappeared. All the way to Imperic and then you continue that way. Up along the north coast. Or you switch and go eastward. Again. Or you go eastward through... Through Peoria, which I need a new name for. That's one of the places I want to change. Uh... Then you go south from there, Locks Dam, Scrag Cap, and uh, Anaconda, which is on the same, I think it'd be latitude, with Temeros. It's just directly to the, uh, directly to the east of it. 
And then to the east of that is a giant range of mountains, on, and on the other side of that is where the ocean is, the other ocean. Because, again, we're on an isthmus. Now, if I felt like it, I know this is already a 30-minute episode, if I felt like I could, I could run this guy around and send him back down, but first of all, uh, Caps Junction doesn't have the facilities to turn an engine around. I mean, you have the run around, but I don't want to run this guy in reverse. I'd rather have a Y, and we're not built to have a Y. Also, there's another helper that'd be here. I'm not sure why you'd want a helper all the way up here, but that's that. By the way, we are at the highest point. Uh, it'd be going, it'd be descending from here. We will have a water tower. I'll probably actually put it up on this thing so it has a use. We will have a water tower up here because there's a lake right there. A really, really high lake. And then that cascades down, it kind of follows the tracks, and then it goes under the tracks. And it ends up at Arturo. Then it passes Arturo, crosses the narrow gauge, uh, crosses the, the western section of the narrow gauge two more times, falls into another lake, then does a big S-curve on its way down to Port Charles, and it comes out next to Port Charles in much the same way that the Olderston River uh, comes out next to Zanza, or Galgora. Also, not Olderston River is not final. I'm going to go and rename that stuff when I get the chance. But uh, I'll, I'll get to that. Either way, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And I'll see you guys next week. Train Man out.